A good work, Rabbi Sai. Ah, you can just mask in the mirror, so it's more like I. Fair Hanako, good work. Erev Hanako, hi, Rebelli. Today marks one year of me joining the DAF, which ultimately marks the start of my return to Limit at after many years of not opening up a safer. For the sake of honesty, even today, I do not open the Gemara. I learned to share through the video. I don't want to take that opportunity to thank whoever is behind adding the words and text. On the top left of the video. Is that a Mosh Shabbos also? So the guy learns only six out of seven days, basically. That's right. As you know, so we need somebody to do a Mosh Shabbos. Maybe we can get a volunteer. What? I think we're working on a solution that will open up the Mosh Shabbos. Okay. As you know, I went through a lot of my life as a whole, and last year particularly, and I can tell you that much. I can tell you that much. I do not think, actually, I know for a fact that without the daf, I would not have been where I am. I cannot get into many details, but you really know, you really know, and I do not need to remind you about it, I believe. Being at the Shabbaton with my wife was really a blessing for both of us, and we're really looking forward to the next MDY Shabbaton. I'm just curious to know if the MDY bank account is also looking forward. <laughs> not based on what will happen this year, but next year, Hashem will do it better. Also want to express for all those, that were very concerned. A lot of people are very, very concerned that we're going to make money on it. it like, bother them. <laughs> Chutzpah. You know, so, Baruch Hashem, they, they, could, they could calm down. We lost a lot of money, Baruch Hashem. I hope they're happy now. Wow. Do you want to help anyone else with the Oh. Oh. Speaking about that. <laughs> we got to pump it every single day at Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah. It's a time to give. It's time to give to a Mokim Torah. There's no better way than to open up your wallet and give to a Moisa that gives you. So the least you could do is a dollar a day. I mean, you know, Shimmy, here, where's that picture? Do I still have it? Yes. Shimmy Braun, for instance. Shimmy Braun. You guys remember him? Shimmy Braun from Bar Park Matzah Bakery gives a dollar a day per every person in his family. So now that he had a new kid, he added another dollar a day. Hakar Zatayv, Hakar Zatayv. Bikitzer, we're in the middle of, it's my half sick, in the middle of an email. Terrible. Being in that Shabbaton was great. Okay. I also want to express my appreciation to my friend Ramoisha Braun of Muncie for indirectly bringing me to the Yashir by posting on a status, your good morning, Raboy Say Ah, on a daily basis, which is the beginning, which in the beginning I saw as you being another Meshuganer out there looking for attention. Shkoyach, it's so good to be home. But then, when I read over there in America, they sit with pach the euro when I read these. This guy is saying, I'm a Meshuggah. Yeah, you're a Meshuggah, of course. Well, you know, Chav. But then, when I read the inter- I read the interview with you in the Moment magazine and saw your point about it's not about the dad, it's about the Yoimi, which seemed to go hand in hand with my recovery journey slogan one day at a time. I was too curious to check it out. I'm still in the middle of checking it out. May Hashem bless you, me, and all of Klai Yisrael, Brucha and Atzlucha, Forever, your Talmud since Erev Chanukah, Tov Shin Pei Gimel and Shulam Felberbaum, Muncie, New York. Dear Veli, I'm elated to see you back home in good health. Baruch Hashem. Words can I express my gratitude to you and the entire MDY family for all you have done for me. I want to say that your generosity has been a blessing to me and my entire family, including all my children who live here in Yerushalayim. We celebrated my first ever Sim on Masechus Kiddushin, and it was a wonderful experience. Thank you so much. I was so impressed with the Ah. That was heard close to the last year, given on Baba Kama Daf Lamed Beis during one of your last days in Chutz Lars. This inspired me to create a ringtone. I hope you enjoy it. Feel free to pass it on. If someone needs directions, please have them email me at this location right here on the screen. Shkoyach and best regards, Michal Wolf. I'll try to. Do we have? Oh, we don't have sound. Okay, I'm here, and everybody, you laugh at the end. Okay, I'll t- when I go like this, you laugh. You ready? Okay, here it goes. He's calling his phone, and the ringtone to his phone, Tati's phone, goes off. Good morning, Rabbi Sai. 
<laughs> so a bunch of machigayim. Oh, so I guess I can't even play this DJ with the same exact ringtone. I think it was it. Let me play. I'll play it. Watch over here. Man, this one. <laughs> All right, Givaldi. <laughs> All right, next. I, this guy, I recognize him. I think he was at the Shabbaton, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, was he? Do you recognize him? Competition to Zevi. Rabbi Isai, before we get into the sponsors, I want to, because I, I, I forgot a bunch of Muslim Shabbos, and we'll just jump right into it. We learned about the concept called Shoyge Karv Lemezid. You guys weren't there, but I asked the, the, the question in Shir what happens if somebody is texting during Shir? I mean, texting during. Texting while he's driving. <laughs> Texting while he's driving and loyal lane will kill somebody. There's a story in our community. They, they put a girl away for a bunch of years. What is it? Is it a shaygeg? Or is it a mazid? Is it a oina? Some people are guessing this one, that one. Most people said it's a mazid. But a mazid, you have to have a premeditated uh, murder. That's a mazid. Nobody, a person texting doesn't want to kill somebody. So there's something called Shoigig Kar of Lamezid. It's a Shoigig, but it's very close to Mezid. Ein Shliach Ledvar Avera is a concept we learned a bunch of times. You cannot send somebody to do an Avera for you. Hamekalka B'Shab is Potter. There's a Sugi that we learned that if you destroy something in Shabbos, you Potter besides two things, and we had a whole Sugi. Does it apply to, to, to fire? Does it apply to Choyvel? And then anytime it says in Shabbos, when you get to Shabbos, especially in Mesech Shabbos, potter, it means it's potter, but it's also to do. Tam is Shalom Gufa that everybody knows by now, that you pay a half a nezek from the actual value of the, the animal, from the body of the animal, up until what it's worth. Bari v'shem, bari other, if a person claims that he knows for sure, and the other one, the other tzad doesn't know for sure, so the one that knows for sure wins. This is a good one. This is something you can use all the time. And it, it's like actually a sling. Wow, look at those. Could you zoom in on, on his cufflinks? Here, stick your hand out. Stick out your hand towards the camera. And let's see if Dave could zoom in. Today we have Dave. Are you able to? Oh, 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 down, down, down. Oh, oh. The focus. Beautiful. You can find those on mdymerch.com. This is Nisan Al Gantz with his 400 different websites. I'm sure. Maybe he has. No, no, but this, I don't know if this is MDY merch. This is MDY, no, MDYcufflings.com. No, this is not a special website for cufflings. Okay. Right, exactly. That's what I, that's what I, that's what I thought. It's a beautiful thing that if somebody claims you owe me wheat and you admit that you owe barley, according to one man, you don't have to pay the barley, even though you admit you owe it to him. Why? Because by him saying chitin, He's actually telling you, I'm moichel you on everything else. I only want chitim. Okay. Rabbi Isai, the Mesechta is sponsored for the unity of Am Yisrael. The parents of Chodesh had slochel and schos, Yisuf Meir, Ben Rochel, and Yidin worldwide. The parents of Chodesh, Lili Nishmat, Chano, Bar Eli Melech. The parents of Chodesh, Lili Nishmat, Mendel Ben Binchas. The parents of Chodesh, Lili Nishmat, Zachai Ben Moish, Lili Nishmat, Zachai Bas Yosef. The parents of Yom, Freil Chanukah to the MDY family, Mishkoyach, wherever that is. Art of the month, Yosef and Chai, sorry for all the schusim that come from Sport and Lino Matayra. Since I came to Israel, I forget to say that we're also learning the shir. It should be schus for the Chayalim who are in battle right now. They usually go to battle at night. And when I was in America, it was easier to, uh, to remember this because we were learning at night during Israel night. Now that we learn 7.15, that's basically when they finish their operations. So the limon should be schos. They're in there right now. Every day is another. We hear more every day. Another tsar, another two, three a day. It's nerevayim. It's families. And besides, they said there's 2,000 new cripples. 2,000 cripples. Lifelong cripples. That's a, that's a very big number. So they should all have a refuah 
There should be no mason, no more tsaris, no more nichum avelim necessary, and the, the, the kidnap should, should come home bekarov. And we, we have to ask for the gula. We have to beg for the gula, cry for the gula. That's our job. Uh, I said already, the, the Yosef and Chai Sarful, the Schuz Nakarim from Limit Atayra. Okay, Rabbi Yisai, here we are on the bottom of Lamed Vav, Amad Beis. Tomorrow is Mamash Agadita. Today we have somewhat Agadita, then we have a little bit of a sugi in between. Nothing heavy. Says the Gemara. We're, we were talking about this case, just to remind Ayla. A guy <coughs> whacks his friend on the ear, or to, it's called Tekea. Either he hits him, Tekea means to hit, or Tekea means to do a Tekea with a shoifer right in his ear. He has to pay, what was it, a, 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 one, one coin. Noisinloi Sela. So the Gemara wants to know, and it literally happened, the story happened. Does, is it a, a silver Sela? Is it a Medina? What is it? So the Gemara says, We said, Pashtuah Mahad Amar Rabbi Yudah, called Kesef Amar Batari, Kesef Tzur, Vishal Devarim, Kesef Medina. When it comes to, I don't know if we said it, but if we didn't say that right, write it, Pashtuah Mahad, what? Mayhave Allah, oh, very good, Mayhave Allah. So, bottom line, what is it? Pashtuah Mahad Amar Rabbi Yudah, Amar Rav, called Kesef Amar Batari, Kesef Tzur. When the Torah says numbers, a lot of times the Torah says, Shloshim shekel for this, for Aynas, Mifata, David, all sorts of things. That's all. Kesef Tzuri, that all, that's all silver. Vishal Devreyim, we're Lamed Vav and Beis, six lines from the bottom. Vishal Devreyim, but when it comes to something in Banan, like our case, where a guy gives a whack in the ear, he gives him like, uh, it's a certain amount of Chacham or Musakin. Vishal Devreyim, Kesef Medina. Okay, so you know, it's in Kesef Medina. Says the Gemara, Omer Le'ahu Gavra. So he says, Guy says, look, I don't need a half a zuz. Sometimes, you know, a guy gives you like a little dent in your car. If it's not a, an air stroll, it's maybe a thousand shekels. In America, it's a little dent. It's very annoying. You're going to start, now you're going to take $100 from the guy, $50. So you just say, forget it. <clears throat> Hoping that he's going to have a guilty conscience for the rest of his life. You know, you're like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give, it, give it to the poor. I don't need your money. It's a half a zuz, a half a thing. Forget it. Then, Hodar Omer Lay. Then he says, No, you know what? I want it. I'll make myself feel good. I'll get a drink, something, whatever. Give it to me. That's it. I'm in charge of the anim. You already said, Give it to the poor. That's it. Maybe it's been Mamet Shlashton, whatever the, the reason is, because there wasn't a, he didn't give him the money, there's no king in made here. You said it, you said it a lot of times when it comes to Zdaka also. You, you say you're going to give Zdaka, you have to, does this is the right to take your word back? Okay. I don't know if that's the reason, but. I'm the, the hand, I, I'm Zoycha for Anim, that's it, you lost your money. The Amar Rabbi Yehuda and Shmuel Yisoyim Yisoyim Im Elam Tzirchim Prusbul. Prusbul again is this document over here. We all did it this year. Shmita the halach is that the Torah says that when Shmita comes, all your loans get erased. So people didn't want to give loans before Shmita. They were concerned that Shmita is going to come. That's going to erase the loans. And the Torah says you're not to be concerned that you can't. Torah talks about this. You have to give loans and not be concerned. That it's giving. So, but people stop giving loans. So Hillel's Masak in the Prusbal. You just... Last year, Prusbal. Last year. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> I meant last Rosh Hashanah. Not no, like... The the, no, was it before? Are you sure? Before Shemitah. No, when was Shemitah? Whatever, it's all a dream. It's all a big... <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Whatever. It's mavish. Like, when you get to my age, Rabbi Yisrael, when you get to my age, you'll see the years go back, they go by quicker. You know what? Forget that, because there's a bunch of people that are older than me in this room. When, when you give a shear every day, 
a lot of funny things happen. Like people that you met yesterday, you don't remember them today, whatever. Okay, it's a different story. We'll talk about it a different time. So, we're coming up to one of the greatest stories in all of Shas. Mamish, the greatest story. Oh, and it's even possible. So, he, again, so you take this document. You, if you give your loan to Bezdin, once Bezdin has your loan, is you have to deal with them. So it doesn't get erased. And that's what a principal basically operates in that way. But a yasum, a little kid that just lost his father, what he, he doesn't know anything about a principal, doesn't take care of them automatically. The great Rim Gamliel and his bezin, he's their father. He takes care of them. So Mela, Ani also, we take care of that. You said it, that's it, you're done. Says, go here, goes. Rabbi, you ready for the story? It's an incredible story. Chanan Bisha, the famous Chanan Bisha, he's at the end of the Masech, the Dafkuf Tezvav. He's a famous, he's a Ganav. The Gemara wants to know if he's a famous Ganav, not a Ganav, but he's a Ganav. A ba- Bisha means bad. Chanan, the bad guy. He gave his friend a good whack in the ear. So they bring him to Ravuna, Zil Havli Pagad Zuzza. Give him a half a Zuz. Says Gemara, Havli Zuzza Macha. Okay, so Chan Bisha takes out a worn out Zuz. So he wanted to give him half a Zuz of that Zuz that's worn out. He couldn't find anybody that would give him change. It's no, give me a give me a nice one. I don't want a torn up a dollar bill with your with your scotch tape on it. Give me a nice uh, uh, but it's a dollar? No, but it's worn out. I don't want it. Says the Gemara. So what did Khan Bisha do? He whacked the guy in the ear a second time. Now you can have the whole thing. Rabbi, I remember this story. It's one of the best. One of the best. It's a classic. Shalom Yisrael. <laughs> Get over here, Yossi. I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs> you want a demonstration? I'll give you a demonstration. I carry a baseball bat. Azuz. You asked for it. The, um, somebody once complained to uh, Rav Shlemke Zvil. Shlemke from Zvil. He said, um, I have a lot of, a lot of tsaris. A lot, a lot of tsaris. And what's going on? So he told him, he said, you know, when a guy goes snoring for money and the guy is asking for money, says, hey, you have a half a dollar? What does that mean? It means he's going to give the, the guy, the collector, a dollar. And he wants to have a dollar to change. And if the guy in Shul says, you have five? You have five dollars? Oh, that's good. That means he's going to give him a ten. And he wants five change. And what if he says, you have, here's fifty. That's unbelievable. That means the guy's going to give him a hundred dollar bill. And all he wants back is fifty. So he says the same thing with Yisurim. Hashem Shem is giving you Yisurim. He's giving you that amount, a, a large amount. That means that he wants to give you a lot of good stuff. The, the ch- that's just the change. That's chap, something like that. <laughs> you messed up the story, please, Rebelli. Say it again, like this and like that. Okay. Says the Eligi Mishnah, sponsored by Moshe Cohen, Schos, they should have atzlacha in Ruchnius and Gashmis and Parnos and alts good. Sharshu muad leminoi. You have a bull. I'm going to see that a bull, he could be a muad for different things. He could be a muad on a Shabbos and not on a Sunday. He could be a muad when he hears the shofar blowing. He could be a muad for camels, not for bulls. He could be a muad for different things. So look at this, the wording here. Because this is very important for the sugya. The sugi basically goes to the bottom of the Amud. And I think it's Kedai to pay attention here. So look at the first words of the Mishnah. Shar shu muad leminoi. A shar who has damaged three times to his own kind. He's racist. He only damages his own kind. Ve'enoi muad l'she'enoi minoi. But he's not a muad to another kind. So Mela, the mission is going to say that he has to pay Nezik Shalom to, to his kind, to bulls. But he doesn't have to pay Nezik Shalom to a lion. Let's say he damages a lion. Let's say he damages a sheep. 
He doesn't have to pay. He only pays half because he doesn't. He's not a muad for sheep. But look at this word over here. What does that mean? Does that mean that if he's a muad to bulls, he's automatically not a muad to sheep? Or it means we know for a fact he's not a muad to sheep. What's a simple lashon there? Simple lashon. What does veina mean? Uh, and what is you know for a fact, or we assume? Very good. That's that's no no no. He, he's right. That is right. That is right. It's it says if it didn't have a vav, then it would be ainoi muad l'shein minoi. Just because he's a muad to bulls, he's not. It doesn't mean he's a muad to anything else. But it doesn't say that. It says ve'enoi. Ve'enoi means I know for a fact. I know for a fact he doesn't, he doesn't chase other animals, he doesn't damage other animals. Meaning, if I didn't know for a fact, then he would automatically be a mood for everything. It just happens to be this particular bull, I know his history. But any other bull, that's what the mission is saying here, any bull that damages three bulls, that means he damages lions, donkeys, camels, everything. He's a damager. It happens to be that this bull is ve'enoi. It's very, it's subtle, and it's subtle, but it's very important. Okay, let's keep on going. Mu'ad la'adam, this bull only attacks human beings. It says in the Mishnah, I know for a fact he doesn't attack animals. You could, if it didn't have a vav, it would say, Mu'ad la'adam, I don't know for a fact, but automatically I'm going to say he's not a mu'ad. That's, that's not what it says there. It says, ve'enoi. I know for a fact. Mu'ad tanim. Tanim means a small animal. He's a mu'ad for small bulls, for what are they called? Calves. Calves. Veals when they're dead. In your business. Yeah. <laughs> so he, we know for a fact that he's a mu'ad to small ones. Meaning, if you, if you look at all these things, look at them for a second. A bull that attacks younger bulls just means... He, He's, uh, he's scared of larger bulls. He's just attacking the small ones, picking your own size kind of thing. He's a bully. Very good. Excellent. He's a bully. Fine. Very more like that. Says, says the Mishnah, Shumud Lai Mishal Nezik Shalom. Whatever he's a mood for, he has to pay Nezik Shalom. Ve'ashayin Mu'ad Lai. If he's not a mood to larger animals, he's not a mood to animals at all, he's not a mood to a- another min. He's still a tam. So you can have one animal that's a mood for this and a tam for that. Again, it says here above. They're asking him a question. What if we know this bull only attacks on Shabbos? Doesn't attack on the weekday. Explains Rashi. Because on Shabbos, you're not allowed to have your bull work. So your bull is relaxed. So he gets into a mood. He's moody on Shabbos. He, he needs the yoke. He needs, he, literally, the yoke. He needs to go ahead and plow, and that, that calms him down. Once, if you let him free, comes a vildechaya. There was... Um, a woman, Maisa Shahaya, a woman came to the Rugged Shover. You know, the Rugged Shover was a big Eloi. If, if you ever saw pictures of him with the payas, he was from the biggest Eloi. Uh, my, my grandfather, Ramon Chesavitsky, had a, a schos to write back and forth with him because he didn't have patience for people. He would call Rabbanim names. He'd say, You're an Ama Aretz, you this. Because he was the one, for instance, like when the, they came out with that safer that they said they found the New Yerushalmi hidden, he looked at it in a second, he said, It's fake. It says, because every Masechta has a new Tana. And over there, I didn't find the new Tana. In seconds, he could go through Shat. Anyway, a woman came to him and said, Rebbe, what should I do? My, my son doesn't nurse on Shabbos. Only nurses during the week. Could I pump the whole oh, Shaila? So he says, Mufur Shir Shalmi. And that was the end of the, the answer. So they said, what do you mean? So they asked the, the Talmidim. He said, there's a Toysavis on the Aflamid Zayinu Medalif in Baba Kama. Obviously, she didn't know Baba Kama, just a Yushalmi. He didn't say one Masechta. So, Taisus over here says, Mefarish be Yushalmi, with Vishuroisim be Malbushim noim acherim. He's Mechulik on Rashi. It's a different shot. That 
because people look different on Shabbos. The chashuvim bein of nachrim bein of akiram. He doesn't recognize his own boss. When we had a big schos to have a dog in our house, it was Akiva Simcha's dog. Reb Simcha Sussman convinced us, I'm not going to have excuses. We had a dog in our house. And when Shabbos came around, my wife thought he has Ruach HaKadosh. How does he know? As soon as I came home from shul, he ran to the dining room table. He knew that's where all the food is. During the week, he was over there. But on Shabbos, he chopped right away. Because he, I never wear a tie. I didn't know what it was. He chopped a little dog. He's a shaitan shabbat <laughs> He has a brain the size of a pigeon. But Shabbos, he chopped right away. He, knew where, he knows when the food was coming and before. My wife said, no. I think he calculates the days. I said, no, no, no. There's no shaykhs. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you So anyway, so the point is, the Yushami is saying that people look different. So he attacks people he doesn't recognize. So the neighbor always says, hi, tender, he's nice. All of a sudden, Shabbos, the guy comes with the strimal, the this, the tie, the different suit. Poof, he, so that's what the Rogachov meant. He said, you, 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 you wear, I think he even asked her, you wear a shaito or something like that. The, the, the story goes with the shaito. But you wear different clothes. You're wearing big Shabbos. Your baby doesn't recognize you. To the point, to the, point of the baby. Fine. Zok the Mishnah. Still here in the Mishnah. So Mu'ad the Shabbos bin Mulukhal, Omar Lam the Shabbos bin Shalom Nezik Shalom, answers Rabbi Yehuda, yes, you're right, there is something called a mood only on Shabbos. And on, on weekdays, if he attacks an animal on the weekdays, the Mosul Chom Shalom Chatzin Nezik is only Tam. Now, a Mosayu Tam, how do you, we already learned this, how do you become a, from a mood, you can do Tshuva and become a Tam? Mishiach Zeboi Shloishi Yemei Shabbosos. If on three Shabbosos you show him, Bulls, you bring a bull in front of him, and he's, and he's quiet three times, then he's a tam. He says, Tais is very nice. This is a big chiddush. This is only on Shabbos. You can't bring bulls in front of him on a Wednesday. When Shabbos comes and he does tshuva, he does an attack, then, then, then you know this guy, oh, I forgot to show this picture here. This is a Shabbos bull. Okay, fine. <laughs> Avi didn't find that so humorous. <laughs> he, doesn't, he doesn't have cufflinks, does he? No. It's hidden, it's covered. Everything's, where's the tzitzis? Where's the white tzitzis? There's no. Mishach Azir has a Kemosei Utam, Mishach Azir Shloisho, Yimei Shabbosos. Itmar. So, before we start the sugi, just to understand, we're talking about if there's a vav or no vav. And, and it's a huge nafkimina. It just reminded me of that sugya. I don't remember it clear, but there's a, a Gemara Baba Basra, which I did many Chazaras on, and unfortunately I don't remember it so well. But there was a famous Gemara over there where with Yoyov, you probably remember, Yoyov, he almost, uh, he, he, didn't, he didn't wipe out the, the women of Amalek because his Rebbe told him Zohar. It's the same word. Zayin, Chav, Reish. He thought it's Zohar instead of Zecher. Timcha, Zecher, Amalek. His Rebbe told him Zohar. He messed up big time and he was he died. This is Shiloh if he died or didn't die. whole thing over there. Just the, the, very subtle. Very subtle. It's a Zachar Zeicher. It makes a huge nafkimina. Zeicher means everybody. Zachar means just the males. Over here also similar. When the mission says, Shoshu muad leminoi, he's a muad to, to, to only bulls. Ve'enoi muad l'shei minoi. Is there a vav there or not? Now, we know that there's a vav in our Mishnah. Okay, that goes according to one shita. And it almost seems like that we pass in like that, although the many Rishonim say we don't pass in like that. There's no Vav. Okay, so we'll see what it, what it does here. Itma. Razvid Omar, ve'inoi muatnan. Like we have it in our mission. There's a Vav, meaning you have a bull that attacked bulls. We know for a fact that when the donkey walks by, the camel is calm. Ve'inoi. He doesn't, he doesn't attack others. It's huge. Meaning, what if I don't know this information? What if I never saw a camel? What am I assuming automatically? He attacked three bulls. Is he a muad for camels? Yes. Because it says in the Mishnah, only when you know that he doesn't attack camels, he's not a muad for a camel. Veinoi. Three times also, not to attack? Well, 
mean, how do you get the status of someone who yeah. doesn't attack the Ah, oh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. L'chayra. We're going to see that there's three camel, donkey, this, three for yes. Three different ones. Okay. Again, it's very subtle. The whole sugi is a subtle sugi kind of. Rav Papa Amar, Enoi Mudnan. It doesn't have a vav. Meaning, if this animal only attacks bulls, I don't need to know what he does with camels and donkeys and, and every other animal. Automatically, he's not a mood for other animals. Automatically. Rav Zvidom Aveinu Mutnan, Hostoma Havi Mood. Now the Gemara explains. But, according to Rav Zvid, it says Veinu like in our Mishnah, and therefore, automatically I assume he is a mood to other animals, unless he could prove himself as a nice boy when it comes to other animals. Rav Papa Amareinu Mutnan, without a Vav. The Stoma Loi Havi Mood. He doesn't have to prove himself. A bull that attacks bulls, only bulls. Rezvid Daik Mesefa, Rapapa Daik Meresha, they each bring a raya from a different place in the Mishnah. Rezvid Daik Mesefa, Diktoni Mudlik Tanabe, the Mudlik Dailam. It says in the Sefa, meaning part of the next part of the Mishnah talks about that he only attacks smaller animals. Ve'enoi, meaning. Rezvid says, and it says, If it's, we saw for a fact that it didn't attack larger animals, Hostam have a mood. But by itself, as is, he's a mood. Hokamash it's a tremendous chiddush. Rabbi, think about it. A very, very simple logic. If an animal attacks small animals, a big giant bull, you saw him attack babies three times in a row. Does that mean it attacks adults? No. What's the connection? He's picking on, on, on the easy prey. He's picking on little guys. That doesn't mean he's gonna. He's not. It doesn't mean he's gonna go after large animals. So then, what's the chiddush? Oh, th- that's good for the chiddush. That's the chiddush. The chiddush is that he is a muad. I'm telling you. Says the entire mission is telling us three halachas according to Rizvid. That if you're a muad to bulls, you're a muad to lions and to everything. And if you're a muad to baby bulls, you're a muad to the adult bulls also. That's a huge chiddush. But according to Rav Papa, if you're muad to babies, you're not a muad to adults. So what's the chiddush, Rav Papa? What, what, what is it telling me here? But according to you, Rav Papa, that it says, without a vav, meaning, that you cannot assume just because it attacks youngsters, it's not a mood to, to adults. Stomach loy have a mood. Stomach have a mood. If you go from one type of small animal to another small animal, it doesn't work. If he attacks, if this bull attacks baby bulls, he's not a mood for baby camels. It doesn't work, even though they're babies or small. You need a Mishnah to tell me that if you only saw him attack. The most vulnerable animals in the world, the babies. So that he's, that doesn't make him a muad to attack a, a 2,000 pound bull. Of course it's not a muad for. I say Rosvid, he is a muad, and that's the Chiddush. So Rapapa, no. I can use a different logic. Look, you see, this guy's not scared of bulls. What age? I don't care. He, he has a thing about attacking bulls. So maybe maybe it attacks all bulls. And maybe it should be more. Leishnik doyim the day, leishnik time the day, it doesn't matter. Large bulls, small bulls. Hamash will have a more. Okay, fine. So that's one deal of Razvid. Towards the bottom, new sugya, easy flow. Over here we're talking about subtleties. Rapa Bada Ignoration. Rapa says, no, I have a deal from the ratio. The Tony Mood, Ladam, Eni Mood, Lebehema. It says in the ratio, meaning before that, if you are the, the, the bull attacked three humans, that doesn't make him a muad to attack animals. If it would say without a vav meaning, stomach have a muad. You have to prove yourself. So as is, not a muad, not We already learned it in this Masechta. If an animal, think about it, what's harder for an animal to attack? Another animal or a human being? It's harder for him to attack a human being. 
Human being, who said that? That's right. Welcome back, by the way. A human being has something called mazel, Rashi explained over there. He, he's smart. He knows how to get away from it. What? In, 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 in the world today, go on Google. I, I didn't, but I'm sure. How many animals were attacked by bulls? Uh, animals attacked by bulls? And how many human beings were attacked by bulls? We know how to get away from them. We have cars. We have this. We have binoculars. We, can, we know how to get away from them. Another animal could be more susceptible than a human being. So Mela says the Gemara, I have a Kav So I mean... Even though he's a muad to a human being, the behem nami stomach have a muad. How come? Where are we? Above that, there's a muad to Adam. Any muad to behem? Oh, here's the chiddush. Even though he's a muad to kill people, which is much harder to do than to kill animals, nevertheless, he's not a muad to animals. You think, well, he, if he knows how to kill humans, he for sure knows how to kill animals. No. But you put a vav in there, like in our gear, so hostamel have a mood. According to Razvid, automatically you are a mood to animals. So what's the chiddush? From one species to another species, you're a mood. According to Razvid, yeah? We have to know this. Again, the first line in the Mishnah. If this bull is a muad to kill three bulls, <coughs> then he's a muad to kill all animals of the world. He's a muad for everything. So if you're going to go from one species of animal to another species of animal, don't have a muad. have a muad. So if he kills three human beings, certainly he's a muad for all living creatures in the world. Wrong. You can't make that deal. You know why? Because we're not even talking about a case that you're thinking. We're talking about tshuva. The case of Chazara. He's going to have a muad la the This animal was terrible. Mamish, the worst of the worst. Put him on medication. It started helping. He, he killed humans. He killed animals. So think about it logically. It's much easier to kill an animal, harder to kill a human being. He did tshuva. All of a sudden, you put animals in front of him. He doesn't do anything. So what does that mean? The, the l'chayra, he's not going to kill human beings either. The koi gav behema tlasa zimna, here, you see him says before, in the Gemara, tlasa zimna. He brought three animals in front of him, three times, three times, and he didn't gore them. Maybe it's not considered a good tshuva because he didn't take it back from humans. No. That's what the mission is coming to tell us, that it's considered true. I say, says, and somebody's going to argue with him. We don't know who it is, but it, there's an argument here. Says, what, is, what else is, we learned this week that Sumchos says? Huh? Who, who's mumbling over here? If, a, if an animal uh, attacks three humans, Mu'ad Behema certainly is going to destroy animals. That is who? That's similar to, to Rizvid. If he could attack humans, certainly he could attack animals. So, the one who argues on Sumchos is going to is going to argue on this idea. So he's arguing, in other words, Rosvid is like Sumchos, and the Tanakama argues on Sumchos, so it's a contradiction for Rosvid. No, Sumchos is talking about Tshuva, and this is what he meant. When he does Tshuva on animals, he doesn't attack animals anymore. That's considered good Tshuva. He becomes what? If he does attack animal, what happens? Chatsi he did Tshuva. He was a Mu'ad, he did tshuva, you bring three animals in front of him, his status drops to tam, and from that point on, when he attacks, he only pays half. So this is what he was saying. Not true. He cannot do tshuva. So, why? Because it's much harder to kill a human being, and he didn't do tshuva from that. 
So if he didn't do tshuva for a human being, then the tshuva that he did for the animals is nothing. We may be like Goldstein. Or Ravashi. Toshma. Or the Rebbe Yehuda, I raise a muad, the Shabbos is being removed, Lima is a chol. Beautiful Rai over here. The Talmidim, read it together with me. Here. Talmidim, it looks like they're asking him a question. You see where it says Gemara, the end of the Mishnah, four lines in. Amalem, uh, no, five lines. Amalem, the Rebbe Yehuda. In a case where an animal only gores on Shabbos. And he does not attack on the weekdays. And what does he say? What do you, what's that Allah? You're right. He's a mood for Shabbos. He's a tam for the weekdays. Now let's read it without a vav. If He's a muad for Shabbos. He's not a muad for the weekdays. Is that proper? Does that, that's how a Talmud talks to his Rebbe? Hey Rebbe, let me tell you Allah. The Rebbe tells you Allah. You don't tell the Rebbe Allah. Rebbe, if there's an animal that only goes on Shabbos, ain't no muad l'chol. It's not a question. It's the telling you Allah. That's not, that's not something you put in the Mishnah. It's not even proper. And then what do you say? Omar lahem, the Shabbos, he just, he just repeated what they said. So that's, that's Rav Ashi's Raya, that there has to be a Vav. And the Vav is in the whole Mishnah. <clears throat> then they were asking him a question. They're telling him a, a, a case. He, he gores on Shabbos. He doesn't gore on the weekdays. What's the Allah, Rebbe? And he answers them. Shabbos, he's a mood. Weekdays, he's a tam. El, yamers, any mood, ktani. But if there, there's no vav, so they're saying a statement and asking a question. Agmur, they come, magmur, lay. What they're teaching him, halacha. That's not, that's not respect. Besu, iu, magmur, mahadalu. And, and, and even if they're telling him, halacha. So what did Rabbi Yudha reply to them? He's just repeating the words. They're telling him, halacha, that he's a mood in the Shabbos and a tam in the weekday. And he says, you're right. He pays. Nezik Shalim in Shabbos and Chatzin Nezik. That's not a reply. Om Rabbi Yanni Mereshin Ami Daiko. I can prove this from the beginning. The Ketani Es Shemuad Loi Mishalim Nezik Shalim V'Sheinim Muad Loi Mishalim Chatzin Nezik. Let's prove from the beginning. It says, it repeats. Basically, the Ketani Es Shemuad Mishalim Loi Nezik Shalim. If he's a Muad, you pay full, and if he's a Tam, you pay half. Iyam Es Mishalim Ve'Ena Muad Ketani. If it's a Vav. In other words, the Mishnah is telling us three chidushim. Chidush number one, according to Rizvid, there's three major chidushim here. According to Rizvid, if you're a muad to your own species, you're automatically a muad to camels and everything else. Massive chidush. And if you're a muad to young animals, you're a muad to all animals. Massive chidush, right? And if you're a muad to humans, you're a muad, a muad to everything. And then it says, there's a pirush at the end. By the way, you have to pay Nezek Shalom and Chatzin Nezek. But if you learn like your Papa, there's no Chidush Amir. Each one says that halacha. And then you repeat it a fourth time at the end of the Mishnah. Do we lose Shapsi Cohen? What happened? His son, uh, his son jumped off, but he said he's coming back. Oh, okay. He's a you shouldn't use that yeah, sentence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the middle of a war, my friend. <laughs> no, Shapsi's not in the army. Yeah, okay, you're right. No, no, he's coming back. He's part of it. I, was just, I just got nervous for a second. To Ellie Delinsky, I'm going to look in the camera. Ellie, you better get back here. I'll tell Ellie Delinsky's wife. She came over to me. You changed my husband's life, you changed my husband's life. And after I changed his life, you go to another market chair. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. That's, that's a car satayv. I could go wherever I want. I changed the guy's life. He's mukhuif to be here for the rest of his life. I could come and go. I don't, I don't owe him anything. He owes me. Eli Amos, maybe he doesn't have. Maybe he doesn't have. So you should speak to his wife a little bit. Eli Amos, he's never going to hear this because he's not part of the shir. But something could Pasco, what? What did you just say? 
The mom's attacking me. It's unbelievable. What do I do? I didn't attack the guy. I was just. <laughs> I wanted to learn Torah. <laughs> I want to see. Bring me a video of him learning with another market chair. He's, he's, he's doing his music thing. What? The mission didn't say this idea? You don't know this idea of Okay. Says the Gemara of Intim Salim and Amin Yisrael Rav Papa, and even it seems like we slugged up Rav Papa. The Gemara says even if you say that the Allah is like Rav Papa, then what? If you're just because you're moored, Rav Papa says if you're moored to bulls, you're not automatically moored to other animals. Says Gemara Nogach Shor Chamor VeGomel. What if? Let me just see what we have here. Oh, we have something Gavaldik. Here, Shar Hamar. This is a, um, what is it called? A screenshot of the movie coming up. But it, here's a Shar attacking, about to attack, a Shar Hamar Gomel. Okay? So all you have to do, you don't have to attack. According to Rav Zvid, Rav Boisai, if he attacks three bulls, that's enough to say that he's a mood for all species of the world. According to Rav Papa, it's not enough. But it's enough to attack one of each. You don't have to three camels, three donkeys. One camel, one donkey, one bull. Now you're in mood for all species of the world. You mean if you put one of those, one of those, why not? No, but what if you only put one of them? And you mean three of the same one. So you're asking what if, so if you put, you're asking if you put one of each and he doesn't attack those three or any three animals of the world, so he's saying, just like going in, that's not enough for this. Three species he did. Oh, here we ask him. He's asking, three bulls doesn't cause him to be a mood for all species. So he became a mood for all species because he saw he, he attacked three different species. Now, for Chuva, he they brought three bulls in front of him and he didn't attack them. Is that enough for tshuva? It wasn't enough to become a mood. Is that enough to become tshuva for all species of the world? I hear. What? <laughs> Let's see if you're right. Let's see if you're right. We'll see. Maybe we'll have an answer by the end of the sugi. Let's see. Tanar abonon. Ro shor nogach. Shor loy nogach. Shor nogach, shor loy nogach. Shor nogach, shor. In other words... He's the Sirugan. How do you say Sirugan in English? Every other one. Alter. He's an alternator. <laughs> He's an alternator bull. He sees a bull, he attacks. He sees a second bull, he doesn't. The third one, yes. Fourth one, not. Fifth one, yes. Sixth one, not. Seventh one, yes. He has a pattern. Rosh, Shor Nogach, he attacked. Shor No, he didn't attack. Shor Nogach, he attacked. Shor Nogach, he didn't attack. Shor Nogach, he attacked. Shor Nogach, he didn't attack. Nasim, Mu'ad, the Sirugan. He becomes a mu'ad, the sirugan, the shvarim, for only bulls. So what happens? He attacked number seven. Yeah, I say attack, it didn't attack. I don't know, whatever he attacked. He attacked, didn't attack. Attack, not, attack, not, attack, not. And then attack. Seven, he attacked. Eight, he attacked. What is he chayv on eight? Chazinezek. Seven full, eight half. <coughs> Torah Abonam, Rosh Shor Nogach, he attacked the bull, Chamar Le Nogach, he didn't attack the donkey, Sus Nogach, he attacked the, the, the horse, Gomal Le Nogach, he didn't attack the camel, Pered Nogach, he attacked the mule, Aroid Le Nogach, Aroid is like the uh, very dangerous donkey, Le Nogach, Nasimu the Sirugan, Lakol. So if he attacks a lion on seven, and then an elephant on eight. So he's chayiv nezek sholem on the lion and chatsi nezek on the elephant. Yiboylu. Lamedzayin on base. Shor, shor, v'shor. Nogach. I missed the word. Yiboylu. Nogach. Shor, shor, v'shor. Bull, bull, bull. Chamor v'gamol. My boys, I believe we have a video for this. Let me see. Oh, here's... 
That's Shor Chamor Gomel. Okay. That's with the video. But here is the video for today. Uh huh. It's getting ready. That's Shar. 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 Chamor. Gomel. Here's the Shiloh. The, the the third shar does he belong to the to the two in front of him? What category do we say? No, he is a muad to attack bulls, or do we say that he's part of the the second group? Okay. Oh, good point. It seems like we're going with Rapapa over here. Rapapa said, according to Razvid, if he attacks three bulls. Then automatically, there's no Shiloh. He's, he's an attacker for all animals. Very good. So the oil is holding cup. Without. According to sponsors, <laughs> he's playing with all the buttons over there. <laughs> it's a good point, Taka. So, um, however, if you look at Taisvis, Taisvis says something very interesting on the top. I'm just reading the first words here. So it's tells a whole different story that's not mentioned in Gemara. That between the bulls, he saw a camel, he saw a lion, no attack. So what is he gained by that? If there was added, it's not just shar, 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 but shar, camel, shar, donkey, shar, which Gemara doesn't mention, and that's how Tesis learns, then it goes even according to Razvid. Okay. Mal. So... <clears throat> Do we stop here and say the sponsors? Okay, turning to the daf, sponsored by Hanan Aberbach. And his wife, Shiro. This is a long one. Uh, yes. My holy nephew, son of Robert and Jen, early. And Lilinishmas, Biyamim Meir, Ben Zev David. His neshama should have an aliyah. Raboisai, since it's Hanukkah, I'm going to push this even though I was told not to. The MDY needs a shtick of money now. We covered the Hanukkah, we covered everything. And it would be a nice t- time to sign up at mdysponsor.com. Dollar a day is the minimum that everybody should do. And uh, you could go up to $100 a day. It's also gishmak. What? mdymonthly.com. Mdy Mdy monthly. Monthly. You're right. mdymonthly.com. Very good. And I, I believe, nobody told me yet, but I believe... It might be annoying on your credit card, but I believe there's an option to get your take the dollar out every day. So you make mitzvah zedaka every day. You me? Give zedaka every day. I know I don't give zedaka every day, especially on Shabbos. Over here, we'll take from your credit card on Shabbos. I don't know. Huh? Well, what? What? Since I mentioned it, really? I didn't. I didn't know that. Nobody told me a word. I'm happy you tell me at least. 12 people signed up. It's nice. It's beautiful. You guys don't worry about it. You're in there. It's shekel a day. It says more like this. Mao. Hi, Shor Basro. This last bull. Does he belong to the group of bulls? Yes, he's a muad for bulls. We cannot be mitzarif him to the other group of animals. Of course he's a mood for bulls. But we also can use him as a, a wild animal that just attacks everything he sees. And therefore we have a, 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 a donkey, camel, and a bull. And Mamela is a mood for all animals. We have a kulamine. Fine. Chamor v'gomol, shor shor v'shor. Here, it's just, there's, there's no video. Because, there was supposed to be a video, but it's rendering. It takes many hours to render. Basically, when we get a little bit more money, we'll buy a computer. It costs $10,000 for the renderer. Oh, mamish, we would have another video now. But anyway, for 3D animation. <coughs> yes. Seriously, what, ha- what happens is, once he's done with the video, he says, okay, do you like this? I go, yeah. It looks like weird. It's like all, it's like... You just see like silhouette stuff and then he puts it in a computer. It takes many hours. Just, 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 the computer just thinks and thinks. It's the whole thing and then it comes, spits it out. But it takes sometimes hours. 
So it's, it's a very long process. And uh, hopefully we could get him this thing. Anyway, so what if he starts with a donkey, camel, bull, bull, bull? So is the bull, this is him to learn my kind of thing. If yes, so what about the, the opposite side? Do we say that he attacked three types of animals? Donkey, camel, bull? Or it's donkey, camel, paws? And now it's bull, bull, bull. It's a different thing. Says the Gemara, my... Do, do we take the first? Is there a thing here? No. But where there's a purple arrow, that first bull, does he belong to the odd type of animals or he belongs to his own species? Okay, another question. What if this bull... Shabbos, Shabbos, Shabbos. There is one here. Shkoyach. This guy is a mod. No, it's good. Every, I'm going to. Hey, you want? You want some of mine? Shabbos, Shabbos, Vishabbos. And then the, the bull attacked three Shabbosim in a row. And then, Echo Vishabbos, Shem Vishabbos. Then he attacked on Sunday and a Monday. Mao, same question. Ha Shabbos, Basraisa, the third Shabbos. Is it part of the group of Shabbosim? So he attacked three Shabbosim. What's proper? Shabbosos? Okay. Oh, you know, talking about, I, I, I was thinking of this in the middle of house. I got I to gotta throw it out there because I'm not great at diktok. I, I'm, I'm an artist in English and I'm an artist in Hebrew because I grew up in both countries, whatever. But one thing that I, always makes me a little nervous is during Halal, when... The Chazan thinks he's a big Bamadak thing. A loy ka. It's not a loy ka, right? It's a loy ah. You have to emphasize it's a, it becomes a patach. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. Everybody thinks it's a ha, because there's a mapa, there's a thing over there. A nakuda's like, oh, everybody listen to me. I know how to do it. A loy ka. No. I'm alright. Don't show off in Dikduk when you don't know Dikduk. Dikduk, I'm sorry, Dikduk. <laughs> huh? What? Like what? Um, oh, talking about a bakayra. You know, you know this about a loy ah. It's ah, not ha. Ah. Really? You're right. But it's for dikdok. It's lamed. Maybe that's why the Rebbe never told the kids because it's shem hashem and the marazer. What am I doing? <laughs> He just said, I'm not even a Rebbe. I'm a Shuganer, not even a Rebbe. All in one chair. Shabbos, 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 Mao. Where are we? We did this already. We're almost finished with that one. Chill out. Where were you this Shabbos? Oh, what about Chamishi B'Shabbos? He started, he's a bull. On Thursday... Very Shabbos on Friday, Vish Shabbos on Shabbos, and then Shabbos Shabbos. Mao, Ho Shabbos Kamai Subos, Chamishi Bishabbos, Vere Shabbos Shadinale, Yadli Kule, Yoima. Do we say we have three in a row, three regular days, Thursday, Friday, Shabbos, or no, it's Thursday, Friday, that's one group, and it's Shabbos Shabbos Shabbos, so he's only a mood for Shabbos, not for the weekdays. Shabbos Kamai Subos, Shabbos Sudh Shadinale, Shabbos Sudh Yad, only for Shabbos, take you. He attacked somebody on the 15th of the month. On the 16th of the month. On the following month. On the 17th of the month. Look to the Rav Shmuel. Interesting. We compare this to Anida. We know the concept of Vesas. That if a woman sees them the same day every month, three times in a row, so she... We know she established a vessus. And then Mela, if we, we don't say that automatically when she sees Dam, everything within 24 hours before that, that she touches Tome. Remember in those days, was, they lived Tuma. Everybody knew about Tuma. You couldn't touch this and that. But if we know for a fact that it always happens on the 15th, then everything before that is 100% tar. So now, what happens to a woman who the same exact story happened to her? Raso Yom Tezvav. First she saw on the 15th. Then the following month, it wasn't on the 15th. It was on the 16th. And then on the 17th. 
Rav Alma Kovah Leveses. That is her, that is exactly how her Vesas works. It's always a month and a day. A month and a day. Shmuel Omar at the Shalash B'dilog. So says Shmuel, you're right. But you cannot count the first time, he says. The first time is not a Vesas. You know what I mean? If there was four months, if the 15th is, is a day, okay, fine. But the real Vesas is the second, the second time that happened on the 16th. Now I established that it's a month and a day. The first time that was on the 15th is nothing. That was on the 15th, I don't know what that is. It's not 31 days after something else. It's shup. So Meili says, 16th, 17th, 18th, when she sees on the 18th. Now you have three times plus the first. The first. Now I have a Vesas. Rav says, I don't need 18th. I need 15th, 16th, 17th. That's enough to establish a Vesas. Omer Rava. Shama calls Shofar Vinogach. If he hears the blowing of a Shofar, he goes crazy, he, he attacks. Call Shofar Vinogach. Call Shofar Vinogach three times. Now it's the Shofar. He becomes a Muad. Pshita, what's the big Kiddush? We see, it's, it's, it's obvious. Every time you blow Shoifer, he attacks. I think that the first one is not because of the Shoifer. It's just because he got scared. No, he attacked because of the, the cold Shoifer. Not because he was scared. Says, So we had this a few times. That Hegdish is different than a regular person. Why? <laughs> Torah says, let me see, I think they have the posse beforehand. The chig of shor ish, a shor re eo vomes. Mokhaz a shor but it says mafurish that the whole idea of of tam, umokhaz a shor a chai, the chotzu is kaspoi. We're talking about a tam over here, half. Is shor re eo. Your friend's bull. <laughs> Hashem is not your friend. Hegdish is owned by Hashem. It's the base of Migdosh. So if a bull of Klai Yisrael attacks a bull of Hegdish, Vishal Hegdish, Shinogach, Lishor Shal Hedyot, and if Hegdish runs out of the base of Migdosh and attacks a Hegdish, or never made it to the base of Migdosh, somebody who's Magdish, let's say, Potter. You're Potter if you attack it, and Hegdish is Potter if it attacks you. Shinam Shorei Yehuvah, Lishor Shal Hegdish. It's very interesting. This is problematic because we're on YouTube. It says Knani here. So, it's talking about every Enu Yehudi. And there's a halacha, and I, whatever, I should have brought it here. That if you try, try to change something because you're scared of, of the non Jew and you, you change it, it's the Raisa to change. We're going to, we're going to talk about it tomorrow. There's beautiful stories in the Agatha exactly about this. Imagine telling somebody like somebody is any you they say, listen, by the way, if my car hits your car, I'm Potter. Potter, what are you sugar? It's, it's racism. It's that. So you want to like be nice about it. You're like, eh, not man, he's talking about uh, somebody that uh, star worshiper. It's very problematic. Shosh Yisrael Shonogach Lishosh Knani Potter. But Shuknani, it says in the Mishnah Knani for good reasons. Shenogah l'shor shel Yisrael, bein tam, bein mud, mishal and nezik shalom. There's a double problem here. If you attack them, Potter. If they attack you, there's no tam. There's no chazi nezik. Nezik shalom. Go explain it to them. Says the Gemara Masnisin, the Loi Rishim Benasi. Our Mishnah doesn't go like Rishim Benasi. The side you shor shel hedi, shenogah shor shel hagdish. Vishel, the sign is Shoshel Hedit, Shinogach Shoshel Hegdish. Vishel Hegdish, Shinogach Shoshel Hedit, Potter. Shinamar, that's our Mishnah, Shinamar Shore, Eva, Shoshel Hegdish. If Shimon Asioimer, Shoshel Hegdish, Shinogach Shoshel Hedit, Potter. Vishel Hedit, Shinogach Shoshel Hegdish. Bintam, Bimu Mishal Nezik Shalom. That you, the Israel, a Jew who attacks Hegdish, you're chayiv the full amount. And our Mishnah says you're Potter. Ask the Gemara. Amri. Microsoft Reb Shimon. Mimon Efshach. What's going on? How, how can you get it? Look at the Pasuk again. It says, It has to be your friend's axe and not Hegdish. So how do you, where did you find that if you attack Hegdish, 
you chayev in nezik shalom. I reyu dafka afidu shalom shenogah shalom hakdish lipoter. Vi reyu lav dafka afidu hakdish nami kinogah dadi lichayev. Mimanavshach. Either you use the friend or you don't use the word friend. But you, you can't you can't dance on both chazanas. If hakdish attacks you, the hakdish not chayev. And if you attack hakdish, you are chayev. What happened to the tereyu? Says Gemara. Maybe you'll say no. And the reason why you're chayev when you attack Hegdish, if you are going to attack your fellow human being, you're chayev. You certainly should be chayev if you attack Hegdish. That's not good. Why? Now we all know what daya means. Daya means there's a limit. Stop. When you use the Kavachoymer, it's only as good as where you started the Kavachoymer from. That what? Malal and Tam Chatzinezek, Hachanam Chatzinezek. Okay, so the most you want, it, you're trying to learn from your fellow Jew. My axe attacked you, fellow Jew. I'm Chayev. So certainly when I attack Hashem, Hashem's axe, Kaviyachal. But when I attack my fellow's axe, I only pay half. And you're telling me when I attack Hashem, I should pay the whole amount. You can't do that. When you're learning from a Kavachoymer, you can only learn from what you learn from. And what I'm learning from is another fellow Jew. And that's half an Ezek. So the most I can get out of another fellow Jew, Kava Chaymer, is half an Ezek. Where did you come up with Nezek Shalom? Elam Rosh Lakish, Hakala Yubachal Nezek Shalom. No, you have to pay the full amount. You should have, everybody should have paid the whole amount. But since, look, again, let's look at the possum. The possum says, what is it talking about? A Muad or a Tam? A Tam. This is a chazuz kaspoi. Riyeu the time shalom chazinezek. Oh, it's coming to say that when you attack your friend, you have to pay half a nezek. The chal the mechlal the hegdish bein tam bein mud mishal nezek shalom. You should pay nezek shalom. Dimke nichtek pro la hay riyeu gabi mud. If not for the fact the Torah should have put this riyeu by the mud. The fact that the Torah put it over here by Tom to tell us that when you attack the Hegdish, you're Mechoyev to pay. But not the half a Nezek that you typically pay, the full Nezek that the whole parish started, that we, we, we started saying that the, no, no matter what, everybody pays Nezek Shal. Now there's the idea of Tom, Reyeu by Tom, and that's to limit that when we attack Hegdish, we have to pay, and we pay the full amount. Raboisai, it is Yusuf Kiddush. Raboisai, have a wonderful week. Agutavach. We, let's, before you run away, let's say a capital to them right now, because everybody right now is in the middle of a, of a situation. We don't know what. And we know that young soldiers are out there in the front. Let's say a capital to them. Bekavon and together, not pasuk pasuk. Shir malo is mi mamakim kol sicho adinoi adinoi shema bikoli yenos dava kashuvois lekoi dachanunoi imavinoi stishmorio adinoi mi amoi kimchas tichol leman tivorei kivisi adinoi kivzon nafshi v'lezboroi yerfalti nafshi ladinoi mishemrim laboiker shemrim laboiker yachel Yisrael ladinoi.